Without further ado, please welcome Anders Osborne and Lebo. <laughs> I'm nervous, I'm sweaty, and I hate to make amends. Bunch of opinions, but I'm always on a fence. Pissed off and sad at the same time. Please, somebody, save me from my crazy mind. Every time I meditate, everything's a blur. Panic attacks and short of breath. I try to get things done when my body needs to rest. I've been living in the mind of a junkie. But I still overeat I want peace and quiet But I keep running my mouth My soul is like a hurricane But I'm still filled with self-doubt I hate the way I look And my ego's always bruised I isolate myself and I get some more tattoos Always running late So I can't make any plans I'm preaching about stuff That I don't understand I've been living In the mind of a junkie Thinking my junkie thoughts Putting out my selfish aspirations
Beautiful. Thank you. All right. So that's pretty good. I left New Orleans. Let me see, when did we leave? Yesterday at about one o'clock. And we have traveled till now. Don't tell me what kind of routing I did. But uh, here we are. I have a few High Sierra stories. Some I definitely have to tell you. Back in Bear Valley, do you remember Bear Valley? So uh, the road manager I had at the time, he liked to uh, mess with us a little bit. So all of a sudden, everything started to kind of change and move on stage. And we're looking around, me and the band. I had Kirk Joseph on the sousaphone. I had uh, Carlo Nuccio on the drums and Teresa Anderson. And I had Mark McGrain on trombone. Anyways, so as we were playing, all of a sudden, Carlo walks off and it leaves the drum kit. Kirk can't find the pitch. I think I'm a bass player. You know what happened, right? There was a 10K bottle that kept getting spread around on stage. And we're like, what's going on, man? So it was spiked with all kinds of goodies. and. Um, Later that night, there was an up-and-coming band named String Cheese Incident that was playing. And they were playing at the tent, and I've been, uh, I've been at it all day, sampled all kinds of, you know, different things. Uh, and I got very hot. I had to take my clothes off. And... <laughs> there's a friend of mine, John Redman, John Kelly, used to be the production manager back then, bless his soul. Um, and uh, he used to manage me back in New Orleans in the 80s. But anyway, I turned into a butterfly and I was <laughs> running around inside the tent and it's actually how I became friends with Kyle and the other guys in String Cheese and we've been keeping up ever since. And I had a medic, because John Redmond said to a medic, please follow him wherever he goes. I don't know if he's okay. So here I am naked running around inside a tent as a butterfly with a medic behind me. That's service. <laughs> Hi, Sierra. Hi, Sierra, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, there's, there's been a few, so I'm gonna leave you with that. Uh, and I'm gonna play a song called Coming Down. <laughs> This ain't no relapse, it's more like a bounce Way up in heaven and back to the ground Keep your arms wide open, baby I'm coming down now Got the mind of an army but a single man's heart I might look like a wild one, but I'll never, never, never stray too far from you. So keep your arms wide open, babe, I'm coming down. Yeah, you know I talk too much when I got nothing to say. I get deadly quiet, honey, when I really need your help. So keep your arms wide open now. I'm coming down. Yeah, you know I'm addicted to something that I just can't touch. It's like a giant abyss that I'll never, never, never fill up. So keep your arms wide open. Come down now. I'm coming down like a man losing grace. Coming down, falling flat on my face. I'm coming down. A stone to the clouds to keep your arms wide open. I'm coming down to keep your arms wide open. Babe. I'm coming down. Pass 
passion, oh passion, it's running through my veins. It sets me on fire, it drives me insane. So keep your arms wide open, girl.
Wow. I believe that was my line. Wow. You want to play some? Yeah, sure. I'll try a tune right now. I'm a little intimidated, came, actually. I just came down, so I got to rest for a minute. Yeah. I won't go running out Gonna stand up to my pride Cause I wanna feel it All my soul is gonna bleed But deep left through it I will be Cause I wanna feel it If a silence gonna fall No, I wanna hear it I'm not gonna move I'm just gonna face this vacant move Cause I wanna hear it I'm gonna let the silence swarm Till the silence is a storm Cause I wanna hear it Yeah, yeah, yeah Cause I don't wanna live behind the light Darkness is rolling. Misunderstood. Cause I wanna share it. 
It's long as silence and a fight Storm the darkness with its light Cause I wanna share it Yeah, it's called I Wanna Feel It. That's a, a song from the South Bay Area. <laughs> right, on, right on, right on. Yeah, when Dave was, was telling us we were gonna do this, yeah, and he's like, I was like, what's it called? He's, it's like a Southern Song Workshop. So we're like, oh man. <laughs> but then he called it. He's like, oh, you grew up in the South Bay, didn't you? Okay, we're all good. <laughs> All right, South Canada, yeah, South whatever. <laughs> yeah, right. You want another story? Well, it was another story. <laughs> Kirk didn't show up, and I had to play, I actually had to play bass. So maybe I had a premonition on that first one. You got a history of people not showing up? <laughs> it's me. <laughs> Actually, I used to be the notorious guy that never showed up. <laughs> yeah, I was banned from a lot of places. Um, eh, that's all right. You really don't have to go back twice to every place you've been, you know? <laughs> hey, there's always forgiveness. I was talking to Danny Eisenberg today about the original fire. And kind of the, you know, the, the origin of who we are when we show up, if you believe in reincarnation and that good stuff. Uh, let's see what I can play and see if I can get a, paint a story around that. You give me just a second? And think of some questions, too. You know, there's supposed to be a workshop. Come on. <laughs> yeah. See, Luther was the working man. <laughs> I was the CEO, dude. <laughs> I wish. You want to hear something beautiful or something real nasty? <laughs> Dumb question. <laughs> the nasty ones are always the louder ones, though. Yeah, but I got this compressed guitar, yeah. so the harder I hit, the smaller yeah. it gets. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that Taylor? Yep. Yeah. Come on, Taylor, open up. <laughs> It is a loaded question because nobody screams beautiful. 
beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Please be beautiful. <laughs> yeah. I get, yeah, I'll do back on the main layer. But let me do one that has to do with, uh, you know, there's a lot of violence out there, as you know. And I think they're like Dave, Margley, and all the, the cats that put on th things like this and all the all, it's, you're looking for something different than that, that everyday grind of, you know, paying all the money to the National Reserve and the interest and they call it taxes, you know, the, you know the scam that they got and the aliens and all that good stuff. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I thought I was in the right place. Come on, man. I definitely saw an alien last night. You did? I definitely saw an alien. Oh, uh, yeah? <laughs> I'm sure you did. <laughs> I used to see like a whole slew of them when I went to the radio show at Tibetina's. There was just... <laughs> yeah, not to always talk about drugs, but you you know get a little cap going and you go, man, these guys are freaking beautiful. <laughs> I totally can relate. <laughs> so. There's too much shooting. We lost, you know, I'm a big sports fan, or I should say football fan. I don't know much about any other sport, but I like football. I like to watch people beat each other up and then write a song against violence. So this is, anyway, there's a lot of uh, history of people coming from all over, as you know, in any big city. But in New Orleans, they come from all over. They move in from Mississippi, Alabama, and in the parts of Louisiana, and then they come to the city to make some money. And this is, you know, for generations. But they can't get, you know, it's not always easy. So crime and, and, and that kind of stuff will pick up, and that's a pretty easy solution. So this is a song about that. If there's compression on here, can we take that off? Brady in the house? You sleeping? He's always Young man came from the country to try his luck down in New Orleans. You know the spirit changed in the city, and his heart grew cold and
some educated women And he learned from a selfish kind of cry Questions, huh? Yeah, I admire bluegrass players, man. I don't have the chops like when you're just trying to do the electric way of playing on acoustic. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> I hear something there. <laughs> I'll practice next time. All right, should we take any questions? Ever. My very first book, I wasn't paid, I was in first grade. And it was, uh, hey, man. Hey, I would just stop. I just thought, I stop. Did you get your coffee yet, Eric? Did you get your coffee yet? <laughs> there you go. Eric McFadden. Yeah. So I think, yeah, the first time. It's hard, but I, I, I know that was my first gig, and it was Friday afternoon at the end of school. So that everybody, you know, the teacher was saying, you know, if you want to perform something or read something or do something. So we had, it's like sort of a maintenance little tractor thing with a, a, tra a small little trailer full of sand to kind of just, I don't know, it was some gardening thing. So I stole that and put all the instruments on the trailer in the sand and we took it to school. We were in, yeah, first grade. And me and my friend, and then we performed a couple of, you know, Kiss songs or something like that. I had my Kiss show. That was my first show. 
I wasn't getting paid, though. I got a pretty good first gig story. Um, I was in uh, seventh grade, and um, actually it was eighth grade, and uh, they, they did a talent show. You guys probably had talent shows, right, at your school? So uh, me and, uh, and Zach and Steve, who I still play with in ALO, we, uh, we decided to go to the tryout. We were kind of working on our music, and we thought, okay, we're going to try to do a gig. We're going to go to the tryout. And we showed up, and uh, we, we found out that they alternate years uh, with doing a talent show and a musical. So we showed up with our, with our little amps and our guitars, and it was a musical. And I think they felt bad for us, so they let us, they let us try out. Um, and then they, they had this realization that uh, no guys had come to be in the musical. So, uh, so they said, okay, you guys can play a couple songs at intermission if you'll be in the play. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we agreed, and uh, that was our first gig. <laughs> we spent a lot more time on our songs than the lines, but, uh, but it all worked out. And I still play with those guys. We're playing Sunday, so. <laughs> How about you, Eric? First gig you were booked at? First gig I was it's pretty officially weird, booked at. Like a book, okay, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't get paid, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so it wasn't that official. <laughs> well, I mean, the first time it was just a uh, coffee shop guy named Tom Parrott was playing, and I was about 11. And I was into the Beatles, and he was asked if I wanted to play Rocky Raccoon. So I uh, basically I just got up there, and he was calling out the chords in between. So I would just strum along with him. And uh, there was a couple of girls watching. They must have. Maybe they thought I was cute. I don't know. Yeah, but, they were, but they were smiling at me. It made me nervous, but it made me want to do a really good job. So I was... Uh, you knew I right thought, then? I knew right then. This was the job for you. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, wow. <laughs> so, yeah. That was it. <laughs> good fun. That's awesome. Albuquerque. Any other questions? Uh, songwriting wise, I think the biggest influence that moved me into the idea of doing it, no, let me rephrase it. I was composing melodic stuff early on, but the songwriting was Bob Dylan, hands down. Yeah. Bobby D. It was just the switch, you know, got turned on, and I realized you can do anything you want. You can skip the chorus, you can not rhyme, you can do anything. Just go for it and write great songs all the time. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? Uh, about, I was a mid-teen, I was probably 16, getting on 17, and uh, ended up there. It's a long story. I'm not sure I want to get into the whole story, but I ended up there and uh, had some family in Lafayette, some cousins and stuff. Um, my grandfather used to live there, and it just felt more like, to get to the point of it, who I was seemed to be celebrated by everybody there. They seemed to like who I was. So I decided I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna stay here. <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's been, a, you know, 35 years now, so. It, it fits. You know that, that feeling of when you go somewhere and you adjust how you stand and how, what you say and what you think and so you can yeah. <laughs> But I mean, not adjusted in a good way, in a bad. You should, you could. You have all your default friends from, you know, from where you're born and raised and stuff. And that's not always good. So I found a bunch of new default friends. Yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> I know you, girl. <laughs> anyway, it's hard not to love that place, you know. It's kind of like High Sierra. Yeah, pretty good. Should we play another song? And I heard a request for this. So I live on a street called the Main Street. Kind of a similar thing. I've lived all, all over the city of New Orleans. I've lived in the mid-city you know, mid area, um, Bayou St. John area, French Quarter. And, uh, 
I'll stay away from uptown if I can, but uh, I lived on Johnson Street uptown one time, but that wasn't, it was weird. And I lived in uh, Lakeview, that was also weird. But when I found Domain Street, it was the next level. I knew that that's where I was supposed to raise my kids. That's where I was supposed to go through my joys and my happiness. That was, that was uh, home base. No matter what happened, no matter what I explored, that's where I need to be. <clears throat> I'm actually I'm on a wrong song here, so I'm gonna switch it up. <laughs> They're all the same, really. It's just <laughs> those two chords <laughs> and a yeah. couple of lies. You could do whatever you want, Anders. <laughs> no rules. Okay, let's do a little free tempo. Hold on. So, let me tell you a story about how I wrote this song. <laughs> so. Again, I keep going back to drugs, but I did a lot of drugs and drinking for a long time, so it's a big part of my life. Yeah. But I had done these sessions up in Nashville with a friend of mine, and I wasn't really satisfied with all the tunes. So I was back home, Katrina had hit, and uh, I just shifted into high gear, decided it's, it's time to really do this stuff. If I'm gonna be a junkie, we're gonna do it full on. I'm going to be an alcoholic. I'm going to be the number one alcoholic. So what I did was I did a lot of talking, very little action. So I would go to these bars and these places, and I would talk about what I did and never do anything. But the one thing I did every night by myself was I wrote poetry every single night when I was high as a kite. And out of pages and pages of that stuff, when we walked into the studio to do this, I had like a stack of these different poems. And most of it is horrific. It's, you know, it's not worth anything. But there'll be two, three lines here and there that's just, they're beautiful. They're magical, sensitive. And they have this, this degree of, I think, uh, desperation and innocence that it's, it's hard to write. So I used that in the studio, and I didn't have a song, so I just, me and Kirk, Eric Boulevard, and John Grow, we just came up with a groove, and then I improvised on the poem, and it became the song. So this is a one take, kind of half of it just made up on the spot, and it became the song. Well, I wish I was back with my baby I wish I was back on to me Oh, I would wrap my arms around you Let you know, let you know That I know I'm the one to blame Oh, I wish I I wish I was back on the main street again. Oh, I wish I was back with you, sweetheart. I wish I was on my street. You know. That's weak most of the time. Yeah, I wish I was back with you, baby. I wish I was home in New Orleans. Oh, I wish I was with you now, baby. I wish I. you baby I would kiss you girl so good 
wish I was back in Mid City on the main street again. I've been saying. Other questions before we wrap it up? Yes. <laughs> um, okay. Every once in a while, you know, it's something that I think is necessary to do. Uh, usually I do it when it's time to regroup and kind of learn to perform in a new way or in a better way, it's good to get down to the, to the basics of it with a, maybe a friend or, or two and then just try out the songs. Because you guys 
are pretty good at letting us know if it sucks, you know? <laughs> There'll be this... That feeling after the song, and you go, okay, let's not play that again. So to answer your question, I don't have anything planned, but it does, you know, every once in a while, I'm thinking, I don't know if it's a good idea, but I'm thinking of doing four days, four different guests at Chikiwawa in a row, record it and release it this fall. What do you think? Yeah. Hey, got some guests right here. I'm in. Count me in. So, yeah, it could be done. It could be done. Oh, it's been a long time. What's that? The music of Grateful Dead. First time I was living. Oh, play with them? I didn't play with all of them. I played with Phil, though. And, uh, yeah. So we can get into that. That'd be pretty good. Both me and Lebo. Have you played with Phil and those boys, Bob? I played with Bob. Bob, you played with everybody. It's and, and, of course, Billy, Mr. Kreutzmann. And Billy yeah. Kreutzmann, yeah. We've all played yeah. with him. Yeah. Well, real quick, I had only heard Grateful Dead a little bit in 1986. I was living in uh, Los Olivos, or, yeah, between Los Olivos and Solvang in California, north of Santa Barbara. Fantastic up there. And uh, I was working as a chef, so I had lied. My, I didn't, couldn't find a job, and so this guy said, I got a job at a restaurant, and I was like, I'm a chef. And I'm not a chef, but my brother's a chef. So I called him up and I said, dude, you need to send me a bunch of recipes. I got to figure this shit out. And so I walk in the first day, and it's one of those kitchens in the middle of the restaurant, open kitchen. And I'm the head chef. I'm the guy. That's awesome. I can't believe he hired me without a resume. It's like bizarre. Um, so I lasted about three months there, which is pretty good. Uh, but I remember living there, and I would play at a place called The Grill in Solvang, and I would do my songs and some other cover tunes on Sunday afternoons. And the owner came in one day, and he's like, you should do that. And then he fired me. And, uh, but that's where I used to have a 1971 Cadillac Sedan DeVille. Like a flake, puke green. And I remember very, very clearly riding it around Figueroa Mountains and all that beautiful, beautiful landscape up there in Lake Kachuma. And then all of a sudden, here comes this amazing tune called Black Muddy River. And I was like, what is this? And um, I never forget it. And also the album uh, So with Peter Gabriel was out at the same, I think the same year. So Sledgehammer and Black Money River were my two favorite tunes. Yeah. <laughs> and Blood on the Tracks, of course. And uh, uh, Yeah. So that was my introduction. And then nothing really happened until a few years ago, I ran into a friend of mine, Billy Ayuso, and he's a big Grateful Dead fan. He turned me on to a bunch of it. And then one thing led to another, and then Phil introduced me, or... Phil invited me to come play out there at Terrapin, and uh, it was, it was mind-blowing, honestly. It was, I had no idea the extent of not just the community, but you know, how advanced their music was, how thought out it was, how odd it was. <laughs> There'd be these measures of five beats, and, and like, it's just crazy stuff. So, um, if that answers your question, that was about three and a half, four years ago. And then, so the first tour I did with Phil, he gave me 196 tunes to learn. <laughs> I was like. You got the folder. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm not, I have my own band. I don't learn other people's songs. What? <laughs> so I had to set the alarm in the morning and, you know, get up and YouTube and. Yeah, it was, it was. I will say having, having played with Phil too, I think. I, I think that's part of the uh, of the plan is it too is is getting people that that he knows can uh, can handle music you know but more than just handle can bring something to it and then he does hit you with so much music it's more music than you can learn unless you grew up playing every every tune which it sounds like you didn't and I didn't do that either but what's so cool is is uh, 
I feel like he gets people so, so that they can bring their intuition into it and use their intuition on the songs. Because, I mean, shit, he's played all the best versions of the songs already. You know what I mean? So, so, so bringing people in who can kind of bring their intuition into it and just kind of, you're not going to know every note. And I don't think he really wants that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, no. like he wants people to bring something to it. So, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. I asked him once. I had it dawned on me. We were out there, and I said, "Dude, I got all these friends tell me I've been 160 dead shows. I've been to 200 shows. I've been to 89." I said, "Phil, you've been to every dead show." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said, yeah, right. yes. "That's remarkable, Anders." Yeah. <laughs> Should we do a dead tune? Hey. Yeah. Oh, should we do Black Money yeah. River? Let's do Black Money River. I love that one. Let's do that one. Eric a chance to fit in, you know? Yeah. I'm just, that's all I ever wanted. <laughs> that's all I wanted. I will, uh, I would say one other thing about the Grateful Dead, though, too, uh, is that uh, in a way that the, I'm just thinking of right now with the whole New Orleans thing, New Orleans has such a, obviously, a rich, rich musical culture. And uh, uh, coming from the Bay, you know, like when I was growing up, I, I, I knew some Dead tunes, but uh, like my dad took me to a couple shows, you know? And, um, and I totally liked it, but it, but it as actually more his music at the time, you know, and I was growing up with the music I was doing, you know. Um, but uh, it's been the most interesting things that as I've kind of grown into music and being in the Bay Area, it, that, that is the music of the Bay Area. It's like, it's, it's, it's the soul of the Bay is in that music. And uh, it's such a powerful thing to see in the Bay, but then as you travel all over the country, all over the world, and, it's, and it's, that music is so much bigger than those songs. And it's and it's bigger than the Bay Area, but it's but it's all that coming in coming out into everything. So, and I and you know what really it's like where we are right now, the Grateful Dead. It's all it's all from that this whole music festival, the whole thing. So, yeah, we got a lot to be thankful for with that one. I remember being on Hate Street when Jerry died. We were working on the art for our album, so we put a big put the date in there in a commemoration. But we were on Hate Street when it happened and we got the news, so it was pretty intense. It was. Uh, yeah, so that's the date we uh, commemorate. Coming up here in August, huh? Yeah. yeah. When the light rolls of summer breaks my finger in the heart sun chills me to the bone When I can't hear the song for the singing And I can't tell my pillow from a stone Yeah, I will walk along by the black man Sing me a song of my own Yeah, I will walk along By the black mighty river And sing me a song of my own When the last bolt of sunshine hits the mountain And the stars starts to splatter in the sky And when the moon splits the southwest horizon With a scream of an eagle on the fly By the black mighty river And 
Listen to the ripples as they moan. Yeah, I will walk alone by the black mighty river and sing me a song of my own. Thank you very much, Lebo, Eric McFadden. God bless. Thank you so much. Anders. Anders Osborne, everybody. How about it, High Sierra? Yeah, one more time. Anders Osborne, Lebo, Eric McFadden. <laughs> <laughs>